There's enough lore and content regarding this interaction to last anyone who's interested until next winter, so I'm just going to give my honest opinion and summarize it in the following way. I do not think that anyone that has actually listened to Professor Flower's videos on this topic can make any of the claims that Vosh and his fans continue to make about her. Calling her an anti-white racist that is pro-genocide or pro-ethnostates is a lie, as it was never the content of her arguments. It was a narrative crafted by the failings of the format of- So the funny thing is that later he's going to play a clip that he thinks proves that Professor Flowers is not advocating for, or, or not advocating for, but a lot, but is making white genocide permissible. And then the clip that he plays is her explicitly saying that it basically is permissible. So there are a lot of people who are saying that I'm genocidal, and I just want to clear up what I mean. What I mean to say is that there is no amount of violence that colonized people can enact towards their colonizers that will ever compare to what colonizers have done to them. I think that Professor Flowers is basically just an anti-white racist who stumbled into a misunderstanding of decolonial uh, terminology. So now that we've dealt with that sort of silly stuff, uh, I want to move on to a more serious example of where I feel that these spaces are causing harm within the online left. I think it actually makes the most sense to start this story by briefly going back to Xander Hall reacting to something that I tweeted. I know I'm making you watch me watch someone react to my tweets. It's disgraceful, but I promise I'm going somewhere with this. And then this is the one, this is the one that instantly, if anyone says Vosh is wrong in the Professor Flowers debate, there's just no saving them, okay? There's no saving them. They're a piece of shit, okay? Because they're defending genocide. There's just, that. that is the, the dichotomy in that debate. You're either anti-genocide or pro-woke genocide. You're, you're either pro-genocide or anti-genocide. And certain people on the left are pro-genocide because it looks woke in a certain way. Okay, so if you have no idea what any of that meant, let me get you up to speed. The tweet he is referencing is talking about a conflict from a couple of months ago that happened between the large left-leaning streamer Vosh and the small leftist video essayist Professor Flowers. My tweet is saying that Vosh- Oh, his platform is so much bigger. He's oppressing this poor female woman of color. Oh. Mm. Yeah. With his true. subscriber count. It's white supremacy, though. You got to understand. Listen, in a in a non-white supremacist world, Professor Flowers' channel would be the size of Vosh's, and Vosh's would be much smaller. It'd be the size of Professor well, Flowers. Yeah, it's just part of the propaganda technique. It's like, oh, establish that Vosh has the power, mm -hmm. and that Professor Flowers doesn't have the power. So Vosh bad, Flowers mm -hmm. good. Right. Yeah. Vosh was in the wrong. This interaction began when Professor Flowers made a video critiquing Vosh for conflating black nationalism with white nationalism in a prior debate. Vosh reacted to this video on his stream. He disagreed with her characterizations of him. Professor Flowers made a video responding to his disagreements. He reacted to that video on his stream and disagreed. He then invited her on the stream to discuss, which ended up turning into a debate. After this, she released one final video on it, and so did he. That's not where this ends, but for now, that summary should suffice. The debate was, well, a shit show, as both parties have since acknowledged, and as we'll get into in a moment. But the effects that it had on the online left content space were much more serious and malicious. One of these effects, as Xander Hall has so succinctly put it in his video, is that it's treated as orthodox thought in debate spaces that anyone who agrees with or defends Professor Flowers in any capacity is pro-genocide or sympathetic to violent ethnostates. That is the dichotomy in that debate. You're either anti-genocide or pro-woke genocide. Now, this idea comes from somewhere. It comes straight from the source, actually. From the overlord of the debate realm himself, Vosh. Since this debate nearly six months ago, Vosh has continued to characterize Professor Flowers as being an anti-white racist, whose ideology inevitably leads to genocide. Here he is talking about it last week on his stream. It's like Professor Flowers. I think that Professor Flowers is basically just an anti-white racist who stumbled into a misunderstanding of decolonial uh, terminology. There are always bad people who- See- that's very fascinating that, that Vosh says that. Yeah. Does he not realize that the outcome of all this decolonializing nonsense is that position? No, that's, what, that's why I want to do this video. This is the most fascinating thing because Vosh doesn't realize that when he's arguing in favor of CRT, that's the position he's arguing in favor of. This is the right. Martin Bailey thing. His version of CRT is the the bailey there's the the mott is the defensible position and the bailey is the indefensible position right professor so not, flowers has the 
he he's called out Professor Flowers' indefensible position. Like he's basically right. targeted her and saying, you know, this position is indefensible, leads to genocide, et cetera, et cetera, right? Right, but what I mean is like he's here, let me play. Six it months ago, Vosh has continued to characterize Professor Flowers as being an anti white racist whose ideology inevitably leads to genocide. Here he is talking about it last week on his stream. It's like Professor Flowers. I think that Professor Flowers is basically just an anti white racist who stumbled into a misunderstanding of decolonial. Yeah, because he's conceptualizing this as like, oh, Professor Flowers is racist. And she's just using this colonialism wokeness to justify her racism. Mm -hmm. And he, it's like, he doesn't, how can he not understand? Like, is he that dumb? Is he yeah. that out of touch? Well, he's that, that he doesn't understand like, well, n maybe that's the case with professor flowers. I don't know, but the philosophy she's talking about the colonialism, the CRT shit that all leads to that place naturally the she's not bringing that into the philosophy that's yeah. in the philosophy that is the purpose of the philosophy exactly. exactly yes no i this is what's insane that's why that's why when he goes on tim pool's show and argues with charlie kirk about critical race theory he's not arguing about this version of critical race theory he's arguing the made up version of critical race theory i see i don't even think he understands that this is the philosophy of critical race theory right maybe but, but so he, we're, so you're taking the he just is fucking ignorant position. but he's called this is what's so fascinating about this because he's calling out the critical race theory position as clearly as we have called it out many many times like we i i believe all last week I, we were talking about all of these yeah. mainstream media people basically you know joy reed is a fucking racist like nonstop on our television show every single day. I don't see anything different from the things that Joy Reid is saying and the things that Professor Flowers is saying. So it's like mm -hmm. that well, there's position a difference. is it's the just mainstream that, position. There's a difference. It's just that Joy Reid is following the same ideology that leads us to the Professor Flowers genocide right. position. Right. She's not. She's basically being more articulate about it. Yes. Uh, terminology. There are always bad people who will mask their ideology through sort of euphemism and adjacent positions. How many super far-right fasci types cloak their positions in the front of, like, nationalism? Not, like, hyper-nationalist, fascist, whatever, you know, but just, like, regular American nationalism. That's, like, the most common thing in the book, you know? It's not even, like, anything PF said was that extreme either. It's ethnic cleansing. See, the, the huge difference is, though, the... The philosophy itself is is developed to empower the black nationalist mindset. That's the whole point of it. <laughs> yes, yes. It's specifically for that. But I don't. You can't say that about conservatism. Like conservatism well, isn't a philosophy that's designed to foment uh, ethnocentrism or white nationalism. Well, they would say it. They would say it is. They would, um, but that's a mischaracterization right. of conservatism. Well, well, I'm actually. I'm really glad you framed it the first way because I never really thought about it on that language but you're right crt literally is designed intentionally to foment the black nationalist perspective from the civil rights perspective from the civil rights movement and that's yes. why and that's you know what gary peller talks about and race in his in his conceptualization of race consciousness the entire point of crt is to say listen during the civil rights movement we let the dirty liberals win the war about how to handle race stuff but we need to go back and start to think about the black nationalists and the socialist conceptualization of how to, you know, create our perfect society. But Vosh in this exchange is taking the side of those dirty liberals that won. I he's know. Taking the, he's taking our side. Yeah. Now, now that he is being targeted by this, suddenly he drops all the, the CRT and all of the socialism and all the race, race Marxism, and he becomes a dirty liberal. Yes. Not only that, he he in subsequent streams he he's like, oh, pardon me for coming off as colorblind, but you know we should be colorblind to this kind of shit. Right, right. It's like I, I ding ding ding. Isn't that the value of colorblindness? How can you foster well, a multicultural society without that? I think what's going on here too is that we have BreadTube is divided by it. There's a battle between the Marxist, the economic Marxist, and the race Marxist. Right. And as long as they have Donald Trump 
as long as they have some right wing enemy to go against, they can unify against that. But when that enemy, when the external enemy goes away, right. the daggers start to point inward. <laughs> right. Yes. No, they come, the economic Marxists, which, you know, you can make an argument that Vosh falls into that camp. Yes. They start realizing, hey, I'm surrounded by a bunch of fucking racists. <laughs> and I don't like racists. I'm in a very peculiar position here. <laughs> Like I have one of them making hit piece videos about calling me a racist, right? Right. 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 Then all of a sudden, it's like, hmm, maybe I'm not so into this CRT stuff. Saying I don't get it. There's enough lore and content regarding this interaction to last anyone who's interested until next winter. So I'm just going to give my honest opinion and summarize it in the following way. I do not think that anyone that has actually listened to Professor Flowers' videos on this topic can make any of the claims that Vosh and his fans continue to make about her. Calling her an anti-white racist that is pro-genocide or pro-ethnostates is a lie, as it was never the content of her arguments. It was a narrative crafted by the failings of the format of... So the funny thing is that later he's going to play a clip that he thinks proves that Professor Flowers is not advocating for, or, or not advocating for, but a lot, but is making white genocide permissible. And then the clip that he plays is her explicitly saying that it basically is permissible. Later. Here she is talking about it in her final video on the topic. So there are a lot of people who are saying that I'm genocidal and I just want to clear up what I mean. What I mean to say is that there is no amount of violence that colonized people can enact towards their colonizers that will ever compare to what colonizers have done to them. That compares to the millions of kidnapped and enslaved people, to the thousands of years of history and way of life that has been wiped out, to the languages that have been lost, to the entire caste system that has been created, to the relocation and murder of millions, to the subjugation of entire nations, and to the subjugation and profit of stolen land. She is... Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> a bit, that's, a, that's a clip that makes her, makes the geno takes the genocide claim away? I mean, it seems to me that it kind of goes in the opposite direction there. What the fuck? Right. Yeah, I know. He completely clinched, uh, chimp climps himself. So it's so bizarre. It's so, that's why I don't like, I Noah's mindset here is very fascinating to me. He's like, how is he not aware of what's going on? I, I feel like it's just this this crt bubble where yeah he's just so ideologically possessed he's right to it. you can't like it's impot they they just they live in this world where people of color cannot be racist no matter what they do they cannot be racist so he sees everything said by a, a creator of color in the most charitable light so charitable that it's completely innocuous to you unless you're being directly attacked by this person. I mean, I watched several of her videos and I don't, you know, you can't say that she makes pro genocidal arguments in every single video, but she definitely says racist shit in every single video. I couldn't find any videos that she wasn't mm -hmm. being openly racist. Yeah. yeah. Online. I, and I, I should say, and this is one of the, one of the things that's interesting about this controversy. The, when I say openly racist, I mean openly racist in a conventional way. Noah would not would not acknowledge that that is open racism because yes. he lives in the CRT bubble where whatever a creator of color says, they can't. It's not possible for them to be racist because they suffered so much injustice in their life that it's kind of justified for them to lash out at their oppressors, right? So I'm I'm talking about a conventional definition. Yeah. One of the interesting people. Go ahead. Oh, just, yeah, just a conventional definition. People judging other people in the color of their skin and right. making a bunch of assumptions about what that entails. Right. But CRT has erected this entire other definition of racism where it's like, you know, uh, we live in these systems of oppression, white supremacy, benefiting from white privilege and what, and all that. And since, uh, Professor Flowers doesn't benefit from any of those systems of colonialism, whiteness, whatever you want to call it. It's impossible for her to be racist. So he doesn't see anything that she's saying or doing or interact in any, any of this interaction with Vosh as racist. But Vosh is like, no, this is racist. He, right. he takes a conventional position, the James Lindsay, Christopher Rufo, fucking Sitchin Adam position. This is racism. 
Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.